because they know that once our children get on the same level playing field as their white counterparts, that they will dominate just like we dominate in basketball, baseball, football, track and field, and anything else in which there is a level playing field. So that while they teach their children about the greatness of their European ancestors, they won't teach our children about the greatness of their African ancestors, because then that would be a level playing field in academia, and they know that we would predominate just like all of these examples we've given them, that our children predominate when they know who they are from the African historical point of view. Now, here's what I found out in 1996. A group of geneticists wrote this book, a little tiny book, Geneticists. Yeah, okay. All right, sure. Yes, indeed. As a, an organization is called the American Association for the Advancement of Science. The American Association for the Advancement of Science. Now, this organization is composed of people who study about DNA and the genome. And you've been reading about the DNA and the genome. Well, this group of scientists came upon an idea by accident at first that different groups of people had different numbers of DNA series. Now, a DNA series means that when your DNA is located, and say they get a hair from your head and they subjected to certain tests. They say, well, this is the DNA of Minister Brown. And yours is different from everybody else in the world. All right? Then they found further that not only are their DNA series different, but the number of DNAs in them are different in different groups. Whites have a different number of DNA, and blacks have a different number of DNA series. Apes have a different number of DNA series. Then they found this amazing thing, that the greater the number of DNA series, the smarter the person, the group is. The greater the probability of genius within that group. So they tested the orangutan, these 15 geneticists from around the world that these geneticists came from nine different universities. And we have here on the cover of the pamphlet they put out the names of these geneticists. And you can see them right there, right beneath, right beneath the title of this pamphlet. Now this pamphlet, most people have no idea what it means. But breaking it down, and after you study it, and have it explained to you by a geneticist, a trained geneticist, you will find that they're talking about DNA series. Now, here are the names of these 15 geneticists from around the world, University of Japan, University of China. Yale University is the headquarters of this organization called the American Association for the Advancement of Science. And you see it down there. Now, this was copyrighted in 1996. All right. What it said is this. This is, this is the mind-blowing part. It said that when they tested the orangutan, they found out he only had three DNA series. When he tested the gorilla, they found that the gorilla has four DNA series, but they're a little, he's a little smarter than the orangutan. They tested the chimpanzee, which is an ape, and found that he had five DNA series. Then they went into, they went all into the different races of the world. They went into Europe tested the DNA series of the English, the French, the German, the Spanish, the Russians, and found they had six DNA series. 
Then they put all of this, what they found from around the world on a map. And this map really is called the intelligence map of the world because they tested 116 different human groups and found their DNA series number. All of them, all over the world, have six. And they put the number in form of a little flag that you can see on this map. These little flags have a color. And they show, oh, this is upside down. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. And they show that the English have only six. And all into Europe, only six. Went over into Japan and China, and they only have six. Over into America with the predominantly European, and they only have six. Then they came into Africa, and they came to the part of Africa. And all the rest of them, they put in little flag colors. Those flag colors are, are orange red, if you notice. But when they came to Africa, they found out that the African people have nine, nine DNA series. From here, just below the Shanghai Empire, down to the foot of Africa. All those 10 nations of which African Americans descended from one of them. We have nine DNA series. The greatest possibility of genius in Africa. Now it's answered this age old question how can a people survive being told they're nothing for 400 years? Never allowed to learn that they came from beautiful cities and told they came from a jungle. How could a people survive? How can a people become champions in everything they touch? Because they have nine DNA series, while the rest of the world has only six. This is why they copyrighted this. And you notice on the outside of this. Now, this map is taken. I took this map right from this page here. And I blew it up. So that the world could see it. Even though this is copyrighted, I can't let you have this book because it's copyrighted. The title of the book is called Glo Global Patterns of Linkage, Disequilibrium at the CD4 Locus and Modern Human Origins. Global Patterns of Linkage, Disequilibrium at the CD4 Locus and Modern Human Art. Now you have to be a geneticist to even know what, that's what they're talking about. But when we broke it down and interviewed uh, Dr. Kidd, the head, he's the chairman at Yale University, we broke it down into plain everyday English so that the world would know that the African American from those people who gave to the world the Great Pyramid, gave to the world science, gave to the world mathematics. A black man named Amos gave algebra to the world 3,700 years ago. It's in the world, but it's in the, it's in the encyclopedia. They don't want our children to know this because then that would make the level the playing field level for white children. First, I want to thank the late Dr. Edward W. Robinson, who was an attorney, historian, author, and educator who impacted our community in a number of ways. And he left behind his imprint in a number of areas of study as well for our community. I also want to thank Transatlantic 
Production for posting this interview on their YouTube channel. And if you would like to see the full interview, click on the link in the description box. There is something special about you, Negroes. There is something special about you, Israel. There is something special about you, Judah. There is something special about your DNA makeup of what and who they have labeled the black man and the black woman. These geneticists knows so much about you and I and the power of our melanin. They have confirmed through genetics the source of all mankind through the discovery of who they call Scientific Adam. Wells comes face to face with the man he's been searching for. A new portrait of the common ancestor of every man today. Adam. Without a skull, we can't know for sure what Adam looked like. But a combination of genetic evidence, vendors' forensic skills, and cutting-edge computer software suggest he looks something like this. Thousands of years after the Bible, and hundreds of years after Michelangelo, we have a whole new face for Adam. I like the expression. He's got a very forceful look. You know, he's intent on something, maybe taking over the world. You know, you begin to get perhaps an insight into why these guys won out and why this guy's our ancestor. They have also confirmed this with the discovery of the mitochondrial Eve and that every woman within our community carry what they call the Eve gene. I was very excited when I first started to get evidence and it was so counterintuitive. I'd put 20 Europeans and 20 African Americans on a sheet of x-ray film and every African American showed differences and all the Europeans looked the same. And I thought I'd mislabeled something or I thought I'd made some drastic mistake. And we kept repeating and repeating things. As we got more samples from different areas, I realized that it was a, a difference in the pattern and that this whole new type of evidence based on mitochondria was going to change the way we thought about modern humans. This skull is as close as we can get to what the face of mitochondrial Eve would have looked like. It's a very complete skull found in sediments in a cave dating from about 120,000 years ago. And we can see here that it's a modern human. We've got a high rounded vault to the skull, a face that's tucked in under the cranial vault. And this is what she looked like. Using forensic reconstruction techniques, muscle and flesh have been added to the skull and provide us with the very first glimpse of how our genetic mother might have looked 150,000 years ago. This is the closest we can get. Two hundred thousand years ago, the DNA in scientific Eve's mitochondria picked up some of these random changes. An A became a G. Some T's became C's. She unknowingly passed those changes along to her daughters, and her daughters onto her daughters, down the line over thousands of daughters, to Carrie and every other person on the planet. Now a group of geneticists, part of the American Organization for the Advancement of Science, discovered and confirmed another remarkable attribute and fact about who we are and revealed their findings in a publication titled The Global Patterns of Linkage Disequilibrium at the CD4 Locus and Modern Human Origins through DNA series or what is called a short tandem repeat polymorphism 
polymorphism called strip strp and an allele deletion polymorphism at cd4 locus on chromosome 12 were analyzed in more than 1600 individuals sampled from 42 geographically dispersed populations they discovered that these dna strip strp numbers are different in blacks and are different in whites in their findings they have discovered the higher the strp strip among the groups the greater probability of genius in that group in their findings they have discovered that asians russians and other ethnic groups around the world strp strip is six but the negro the african the blacks strip or strp number is nine in this publication they illustrate their findings on what is called the intelligence map is this why our oppressors develop laws to purposely steal a number of inventions and patents from our people during slavery because according to the laws of many nations including this nation property could not own property and more specifically property could not obtain patents is this the logic behind the disadvantages our people are born into when it comes to this educational system? What's your thoughts? Please be respectful with your comments. Also, please click the like, click the notification bell, and subscribe to this channel. Listen, Genesis chapter 11 verse 10 explains the genealogy of Shem. Shem was a black man in Africa. If you repeat this back, Genesis 14 verse 13, Abraham steps on the scene. Being the descendant of Shem, which is a fact, means Abraham too was black. Abraham born in the city of a black man called Nimrod, grandson of Ham. Ham had four sons. One was named Cain. Here, let me do some explaining. Abraham Isaac was the father. Jacob had 12 sons, for real. And these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10, these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10, these were the children of Israel. According to Genesis chapter 10.